We're talking May flowers coming up next. I'm Alan Smith. You know, April showers, they do actually bring a lot of May flowers. In today's show, we'll head to California and learn about the pack trials. Now, this is where plant breeders showcase their latest and greatest. And we're also going to take a look at the new P. Allen Smith Platinum Collection of plants. And we'll take a look at how to apply pine straw on a slope, as well as how to care for knockout roses. And a little later, I'll answer a viewer question and show you how to prepare this fresh peach punch. Well, as you can see, we've got a lot going on in today's show, so don't go away. We'll be back right after the break. The Proven Winners Pack Trials is a trade show where plant breeders show off their new introductions every year in California. Last year, my platinum collection of plants was introduced. John Gatos, the Director of Development for Proven Winners, tells us more about the platinum collection. I'd like to introduce you to a, a brand new plant in Allen's Platinum Collection. This is Biden's Goldilocks Rocks, a phenomenal, full sun-loving plant, tough and durable, gorgeous golden yellow color. What's nice about this plant is it, it's multi-purposeful. It works very well in the landscape, but does well in combinations and in hanging baskets and gives you this beautiful golden yellow color throughout the summer. With this beautiful golden color, one of the nice things to do is combine it with other plants. And here you can see Goldilocks rocks planted with luscious citrus blend, a phenomenal lantana, and you get this nice orange-red contrast with the gold. And yet at the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Goldilocks rocks planted with Snow Princess lobularia. And it, again, the white softens the yellow. Goldilocks rocks also just has a phenomenal uh, companion planting of Supertunia royal velvet. Just a nice, bold purple accented again by the golden yellow. I'd like to introduce you to two new Sweet Caroline Sweet Potatoes, a new to the Ellen Platinum Collection. Here we have Sweet Caroline Light Green, just an outstanding plant that takes tremendous abuse. Full sun, filtered sun, dappled shade, gives you this nice chartreuse color and the fact that it virtually is problem free. One of the great things about Sweet Caroline Light Green is that it does a phenomenal job, especially when it's planted together with other uh, chartreuse plants, really echoing the, the chartreuse color. Great plant to pair it with is Color Blaze dipped in wine. Outstanding coleus in its own self, but also the fact that it has such great upright characteristics, edged in green, uh, and really works very well with Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline Purple works very well when planted with Sweet Caroline Light Green. But the other plant that you can pick up uh, is one that actually follows the nature of this plant itself. This is one of the few sweet potatoes that actually flowers. Flowers are not necessarily anything significant, but again, has that little bit of interest. But when you see this soft purple, think of how you could companion plant this uh, sweet Caroline purple with Supertunia Bordeaux. Same color, but a much larger flower, uh, and really is, the flower is accented by the dark foliage. One of the things that you do have to be careful about, just a little bit of a growing tip, is that it is a sweet potato, and sweet potatoes are vigorous. So you have to be careful when you pair plants with the Sweet Carolines that you don't plant a plant that's less vigorous than the sweet potato itself. It is a phenomenal plant. With that little bit of tip, will do extremely well. We'll learn how to install pine straw on a slope and how to care for knockout roses right after the break, so stay tuned. One of the latest additions at the farm is the Rose Garden. Now it encompasses approximately 18,000 square feet, but despite its grand scale, it's divided into small, cozy, intimate spaces. Now leading down to the entrance of the Rose Garden, there's a pretty steep hillside where we're applying pine straw to help cut down on erosion. Not only is it a nice addition to the landscape, but it helps hold the soil in place. 
Tom Cates, owner of Pine Straw Solutions, tells us more. Here I'm going to show you how to install pine straw on a slope application. This bale is already busted for us. They come in uh, square bales, round bales, or bags. Um, this here is about the size of a broken down square bale. On the heel side application, you want to start on the top and work your way to the bottom just for a safety concern um, because backing up a hill backwards, it, it's slippery. You want to work your way to the bottom of the hill. On the hill side, you want to do three to four inches. Um, a little thicker than what you do on a, on a flat surface just because you want to ensure you get adequate coverage. If you have some thin spots later on, you want to, it's hard to get back on the hillside to cover that up. So you want to go a little bit thicker. It gives you a little bit better coverage to ensure you won't have any thin spots. Just gently pull it apart, shake. You'll have some, some clumps that stick together. You know, just pull them apart, intertwine. That's what makes it so good on the hillside is it intertwines. So that's actually a benefit to you. Come over your edges, uh, two to three, maybe even four, four inches over the edge, and we'll show you how we're gonna tuck that here in just a moment. You'll have some high spots that'll be, um, may look to be clumped up. Just go back and pull those apart. It'll settle, two or three days it'll settle, and uh, it won't look quite as fluffy. Final step in the application process is tucking your edges. Two different options is the roll and tuck, which is the most common. Um, you just grab it underneath, kind of roll, it, it intertwines together, and you can come back up and clean up your excess. Um, another option is cut, taking an edger or a weed eater and cutting a straight edge and then coming back with a blower and tucking the excess under. That'll give it a real crisp look. Well, aside from the aesthetics of the pine straw, it's really functional on a hillside. It will not float or wash away like traditional mulches. It stays put through the summer and um, reapplied in the fall. I love roses in my garden, and I like those that really perform well, like Knockout. They just bloom all the time. The flower power is exceptional. You know, and the size is good too. They grow about three four feet tall and three to four feet wide, but you can keep them smaller if you like, just by pruning. And what I like about them is they fit comfortably in a mixed flower bed like this. Like other roses, knockouts perform best when they're planted in full sun, and the soil should be well-drained and fertile. Be sure to plant the roses about four feet apart and allow room for growing and good air circulation. Also give your roses consistent moisture. They need about an inch to two inches of water each week. Now, if you want to keep a lot of blooms coming along, there are a couple of things you want to keep in mind. Realize that these roses cycle. This one just finished up flowering and now it's putting on lots of new buds for future flowers. So what I like to do here is you can prune off some of the dead blooms if you like, and then I take a fertilizer, especially blended for roses, and I just sprinkle it around the drip line of the plant like this. For a plant this size, I'd put about two cups of an organic fertilizer. What this does is it fortifies the plant and helps it produce lots more blooms because what we're after is flower power. Now think about this. You'll want to prune in late winter, early spring while the plant is still dormant. This is the time to remove any dead or damaged wood. And you can do a little shaping if necessary and take out some of the interior stems to improve air circulation. The thing I've learned over the years is not to be afraid to prune. I get very aggressive with it. What I do is each time they finish flowering, I come back and cut them back at least six to eight inches. And what I get in return are a lot more flowers. So give it a try. After this quick break, my brother Chris and I get started cutting back all those spring daffodils in preparation for summer. And a little later, I'll show you how to make this refreshing peach punch. It is so good. So stay tuned. Chris, I'm glad to see you're pouring the gas in on the asphalt, not the grass. Oh well, yeah, I just don't want to burn the, to burn the turf up. Yeah, you've done this before, hadn't you? Yeah, once or twice. Well, I just want to show you what we're doing here. This is an area that is slated to be mowed now. This was, about eight weeks ago, full of daffodils. And what I like to do, and um, Chris doesn't like it rough like this, but we have to do it, is we have to make sure that these daffodils, the foliage that is, persists for at least eight weeks. I actually like to see them die completely down. But what you get is this bit of scruffiness, sort of a meadow look here in front of the house. 
which um, as I said, I don't really mind. But now it's time to cut it back, which is a great relief to Chris. Now we've planted over 175,000 daffodils out here at the farm. And there's probably, I don't know by now, maybe 80 or 90 different varieties. They bloom early, mid and late season. But if you want them to come back year after year, and daffodils will because they're reliably perennial, you have to make sure that that foliage at least gets eight weeks of sunshine before you cut the foliage back because it's that green foliage that takes sunlight and rebuilds the starches and the strength of the bulb so you've got that bloom that'll come out next spring. So by allowing the foliage to persist this long each year, we know that next spring we're always gonna have a beautiful show of flowers. Right, Angel? Okay, we're gonna get out of the way so Chris can get to work, come on. Now that Alan's decided to let me cut the daffodils, what I generally like to do, since the foliage is so thick, especially towards the center of these little groupings that we did, is I like to raise the mower deck as high as it'll go. And then I'll start mowing and, and get those mowed down. And as I make my loops, I'll start lowering my deck and mow it a little bit height to my turf. And then a few weeks, the grass will green up and you'll never know that they've been there until next spring. People ask me all the time what my favorite herb is to use in cooking but it's really difficult to narrow it down to just one. I really enjoy using a mixture, such as Herbes de Provence. Herbes de Provence is a traditional blend of aromatic herbs that flourish in the hills of southern France, particularly during the hot summer months. Thyme, basil, rosemary, oregano, tarragon, mint and marjoram are some of the herbs typically used. Lavender, however, is only added in American mixes and is not used in French traditional blends. Now, whether it's traditional or not, lavender is a nice addition to the blend, but you'll find that the herb thyme usually dominates the taste of this particular herb mixture. You'll find Herbes de Provence a delicious and classic addition to many dishes native to the Mediterranean region. It's especially good combined with olive oil to coat chicken, tomatoes, or potatoes for roasting. Bouquet garni is a phrase used to describe the use of fresh herbs bundled, usually tied together, and mainly used to prepare soup stock and various stews. You see, the bouquet is boiled with other ingredients, but is removed prior to consumption. You might try growing your own herbs to Provence garden, and you'll have these wonderful flavors at your fingertips, not only through the growing season, but also through the fall and winter. Okay, we need to take one more short break. Now, when we return, we're going to make this fresh peach punch, so stay with us. There's so many wonderful aromas that come out of late summer and delicious fruit as well. This is the last of our peaches for the season. I wanted to share this delicious peach punch with you. You see, peaches are divided roughly into two categories, cling and free stone. And what that means is the flesh actually clings to the stone of the fruit on the clings, and on the free stones, the flesh doesn't adhere, it pulls apart. And there are hundreds of varieties of peaches, and we're very lucky to have them. You see, they came from China. Uh, the Persians took them from the Chinese, and the Romans took them from the Persians, and we're lucky to have them now. We grow lots of different varieties of peaches here, and some start early. The clings start early in the garden, and then the free stones are much later in the season. So what you're gonna do here is take four peaches that have been peeled, and just put them in a food processor like this and you're going to add two tablespoons of chopped mint. This is fresh from the garden, it smells so good. And then what we have here is a half a cup of sugar, pouring that in. And then I'm going to add a fourth a cup of peach brandy. I wish you could smell this, it's so good. Pop on the top. And away we go. Now you want this to run for about two minutes, just to where you get it all chopped up. You want it pretty fine, because it's going to be a punch. And from here, there's really only two more ingredients, which is beautiful, isn't it? All right. And pour this 
delicious concoction in here. Now, what you'll do is you'll want this to um, chill, and just before you serve it, what you'll do is you'll add two bottles of a German sweet wine, some sort of Riesling, chilled, and then just before you serve, you wanna add some club soda. That gives it the fizz, and I'm gonna go ahead and add it here. Ha, look at that, what a mess. Oh, I wish you could smell it. And the club soda adds that lovely fizz that makes it sparkle. Now let me grab a couple of glasses over here with some ice and show you how to serve this up. Oh, it's so good. You just dip in like this. Fill those glasses. You see the little bits of peach? Make it so beautiful. And then I garnish it with just a little bit of that fresh mint gathered from the garden. I like to use the little tips like that, the little tiny leaves. Very good, you should give it a try. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. That recipe and all the information you've seen in today's show can be found on my website, pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. garden I dream of a bed of flowers bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us and every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh no, I can't help but smile.